Pull down under stage six, brakes just been caught. We're going into Wollonga, bit of crosswinds. Sorry for the late upload. I was actually riding my bike today. If you want to see what I was riding, lob me a follow on Strava. Link is in the description. Anyway, we know the Wollonga stage very well. Normally a bit of crosswinds on the left-hand side. It's Team Scar trying to gutter it. Uh, and that's basically what happens. They go up Wolla Wollonga twice. Uh, Richie Port attacks with about 1.4 kilometers to go on average, sometimes 1K. But yeah, generally before the one kilometer to go and just absolutely launches it and no one can respond. Anyway, so as we can see at this moment in time, Team Sky with Dylan and Bala on the front, a couple of Michigan Scott guys, bunch is pretty, pretty packed to be honest, but as the climb goes on, uh, we're going to see more and more people get dropped and there'll be, you know, top 10 will be similar times and everyone else will be quite far down. Anyway, CCC, Patrick Bevan crashed massively yesterday, uh, really unfortunate for him. I think he probably would have won it, but you can see here he's he's well well back and um he's not gonna win or really get top ten or anything, his GC is over, but you know, he had a good stage. Uh, anyway, Kenny Ellis on the second wheel, Luis Len Sanchez there, Michael Woods, Richie Port, uh Michigan score of a lot of guys with Dal MP at this moment in time. Dal MP is basically winning. Uh so anyone who wants to win the stage ha win the overall has to win the stage and put quite a lot of time into MP. I think he had about fifteen to twenty seconds on everyone else. Uh, but yeah, so generally Richie Port has someone on the front who sets the pace, but Team Sky are doing this. And this is where I think Team Sky are really clever. So they did this attack on the last ascent of Willunga Hill, so they did it twice. And um, Kenny Ellison went and Wout Pools followed to try and sort of, I guess, draw out more of the favourites, make it harder to get rid of Richie Port's teammates, which worked. Because now Richie Port has no teammates, which is quite, cr um, quite crucial, because normally what happens is he does a massive attack um, after his teammate's setting a firm tempo. Anyway, this is where Team Sky fuck up a little bit because Wout Pools is way too far back and is now moving up in the wind on his own and it burning a lot of energy. Well, in reality, Kenny should have dropped back and helped him up. But they saved Kenny. Uh, Kenny had another job. Now, in my opinion, I think anyone who's in front of Richie Port is an idiot, uh, generally, because they can't see his attack. Um, Bernal had this last year. He could have followed his attack, I reckon, but he missed it because he was in front of him. Richie Port attacked. And on this climb, they averaged like 26, 27 Ks an hour um, for 8% and the, the top bit when they attack they're going 30 plus so the draft is very significant so it's really important you get on someone's wheel and Wout Pools and Team Sky decided quite early on that the best way of doing this is to not follow Richie Port's first attack because it's just too hard so they'd set Kenny Ellison up the road and then follow so uh, everyone's getting dropped um, and the heads of state are really coming into Wout Pools' sort of seventh wheel we've got Pogosai we've got Woods we've got Lucas Howenton um, sorry, Chris Hamilton, who's on um, Michael Wood, uh, on Richie Port's wheel, so he's in best position. Darren MP's got his couple teammates further back. Luis Land Sanchez is uh, in third wheel at this moment, and he was doing really well all week, so um, definitely a guy to watch out for on this stage. Uh, Wout Pool's about seventh wheel. Um, Byron Marina have the Pots of Viva and Ryan Dennis. Kenny launches it here, um, starts to split the group a little bit, and then he goes again now, and the camera is rubbish, but he actually has a ma quite a good gap now. Luis Land Sanchez says, I'm not chasing. Kenny's not a throw on GC, he's really far down. And look, everyone spreads across the road, no one's chasing. Now, this is where the Team Sky master plan is. Look how cute Kenny is, he's actually tiny that man. He's like 52 kilos, such a good lad. Anyway, enough man-loving for Kenny for one, <laughs> one video. Uh, Wout Pools then decides that now is the time to hop across in about five, five to 10 seconds, I hope. Uh, and then you can see Ryan Gibbons is also next to um, Daryl MP. And Daryl MP's got teammates, he's fine. Kenny's no threat to uh, GC. What pulls is a huge attack, absolutely winds it up massively. Um, and you can sort of see the speed on the helicopter, how fast they're climbing. They are motoring up this climb, like super fast. Average watts per kilo for the guys, you know, top three was about seven watts per kilo for the climb. Climb's about seven, eight minutes. So, you know, very solid. And the attacks are all done about eight to nine watts per kilo uh, for the last minute or so. Anyway, Kenny's now absolutely burying himself in the front. Mitch and Scott um, don't help at the moment, but uh, are, uh, some web are trying to, chase this down but look at the gap the gap's pretty substantial already and Wout Pools he's avoided that Richie Port jump so when Richie Port comes across Wout Pools it's not like he's going to be fresh because obviously he already made the attack but the surge that Richie Port has and that massive sprint most people can't follow Wout Pools won't have to follow because he's already done that so it's a very clever tactic Kenny's absolutely chewing his stem going full gas Richie Port decides that it's now to light it up um, and basically when he goes it's not full full when he decides to go, uh, George Bennett's also there, Luis Len Sanchez, Pogosar, Ulisi, Ruben Guerrero um, are also in the mix. Richie Port goes now, Chris Hamilton follows, Mike Woods decides to go, Mike Hood's hit about 900 watts on this 
um, surge and Richie Port it wasn't one of his big surges, but then he gets out the saddle again and he drives it and he keeps doing this. He sits in the saddle and he gets out and drives it. And that's what really makes people gap. Because as soon as you're not on Richie Port's wheel, you're not getting a draft and he's the strongest man by far. I mean, look how many people he's ridden off his wheel already. But Dale MP's clever. He gets his teammates around him. They set a real firm tempo and Dale MP knows the the last part of the climb does start to flatten off and does soon. So anyways here, Darren MP, Luis and Sanchez, clever tactic here for GC wise. Anyway, Richie Port comes across to Walt Pools now. Walt Pools is like, all right, this is great. I can just hop on his wheel and just stay there. And just all I have to do is stay on his wheel as much as possible. He knows he's not going to be able to win the stage realistically unless uh, Richie Port uh, sort of blows up or he's managed to hold his wheel the whole time out sprinting. Because Walt Pools does have a good sprint, did win the age best on the age. People don't think it's a good sprint. His sprint is underrated for sure. Uh, but Richie Port keeps going, keeps going and just really sets a f so super firm temper. And this moment in time, I think Wout Pool's is sorted. Mike Wood's blown up, Cheerio gone. Uh, he said in his interview that he tried to follow, he wanted to win the stage, followed um, Richie Port, and you know, that's it. While other guys aren't trying to win the stage, they're just going for GC. Chris Hamilton again looked blown. But look at Darren MP, he's got his teammate in front of him. I believe it's Lucas Hamilton, and he is just driving him and really trying to get these guys back, and they do a great job of it. We're gonna miss the time where Richie Port finally puts in his attack because they skip back to the helicopter and now. Richie Port does his big attack um, and drops pools, but pools is clever. It just rides his own tempo, close as possible, knows he can get you know top three on GC, uh, and here we go, Richie Port's gone, and as soon as he's gone, you're not getting back. Girio, done, finito, that's it. Uh, and he's just puts in the exhibition, uh, 30, 31, 33 Ks an hour up this climb, just you know, nine watts per kilo sort of stuff. Unbelievable. It really is unbelievable to watch this. When you, I like, I've ridden the climb just like real easy tempo, like never properly, but like the speed they go up at this is just unbelievable. It really is. Um, you can see a bit of a tailwind, sort of. I, it, wind, it was hard to say um, what it was. This idiot with a flag drops it. It's like, mate, just stop being such an idiot. You have a heart rate monitor up and you're running up a climb next to Richie Port, like just calm down. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's a solid stage. I, I mean, okay, it's very repetitive, um, Richie Port wins every time. The race is very repetitive to one another, but you know it, it's always it's always good to watch. And look at Darren MP. Look how much ground he makes up. He looked like he was dead and buried. Look how fast he comes up compared to everyone else. Unbelievable. It really is. He Darren MP is just very very solid climber. Really really good. Um, Richie Port takes the stage about a couple seconds ahead of pools. And uh, look who is that is. Darren MP takes the win. GC overall. Uh, and then we got Chris Hamilton. Then we got Luis Leon Sanchez. Uh, and then we have Ryan Dennis, who does a great climb. Mike Woods has comes in now. Um, and then you've got the rest of them, Pogasar, Ulisi, Guero, um, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this little uh, highlight of Tour Down Under. I've got every stage apart from stage one, I believe. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And um, I'll see you in some more World Tour races soon.